welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another episode. This is my lips here, my lips TV. Another day, another adventure, another video. It's Vlogmas Day 20 something. I don't know what's going on. Before I start this q and I want to let you know how my day went a little bit. So, uh, day started off, San Francisco, woke up. Went to the airport and then, you know, we got a little secret employee spot, you know, to get a little grubs at the airport and uh, I ran into someone. <laughs> and before I roll this, guys, if I ever, if you guys ever see me in a video, flash the camera to someone and be like, oh, hey, like introduce yourself to 10 million people. That usually means I don't know what their name is. <laughs> Yeah, so if you if you guys ever hear me say that I have no idea what their name is <laughs> um, So yeah, roll it. Ooh, employee cafe. Don't mind if I do baby. What's up? Yeah, you know, you know, we are, we are here, you know, new airline, who this? You know? Oh, shut up! <laughs> you want to introduce Perfect. yourself to 10 million people? Hey, hey. sure day. I'm my old <laughs> hey. friend. Hey, okay, no. boom. We think so. <laughs> Ooh, baby! Guys, we're out here. San Francisco, you just go to the employee spot and you're like, oh, hey, what's up? Yeah, I know you. Charday, my bad, girl. I forgot your name. I'm so sorry. Guys, it's the airline industry. Like, I remember faces. I don't remember names at all. So today we worked from San Francisco to Portland, Portland down to Vegas, and then Vegas to Detroit. I'm in Detroit right now. It's like 2.30 in the morning. <laughs> but it's Vlogmas, baby, and we don't stop. So I worked those three flights, but the first two were the end of a two-day, and the flight from Vegas to Detroit is the start of a three-day. So I'll just show you what it looks like. And I worked from SFO to Portland, and then I went from Portland to Vegas. Got in at like 4.15 p.m. So then, after I did that, then I went from Vegas to Detroit. My check-in time was 5.45. Yeah, so now I'm in Detroit, and this is the beginning of a three-day. So I get back to Vegas on New Year's Eve. That's a Christmas tree, 24th, or Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve. You know, you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you guys know what I'm saying. So that happened, piggyback the trip. So the reason I did that is so I can get more bang for my buck, you know what I'm saying? So I don't have to stay in a hotel in Vegas. So I just keep working and now I'm in a hotel for free 99, baby. Uh, what else happened today? So yeah, so when I got back to Vegas, I had to say bye to the crew. I had to say bye to my boy Rosario, Mamma Mia, Luigi. Roll the clip. Bro, come to Detroit. Get on this three day. Everybody gets so attached to my cruise, guys. I'm sorry. It's like it's, it happens every single day. Man, I, Peace out, my dude. I'll see you soon. See you soon, bro. Fun in Detroit. Get a jacket. Bro, I can't just get a jacket. What do you mean? Future Malus, take it away. Thank you, past Malus. And I will definitely say that I apologize for you guys getting attached to all my crews. You know, it happens. It happens every time. But I will guarantee you, as soon as I see them again, you will not remember their name. Like in the jet bridge when I saw this person. Hey, look who it is. She can't get enough of the vlog, so she had to come back again. What's up, Eva? What's going on? You're in a hurry? All right, well, peace. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. See you later. Now, once again, back to your future oh, yeah. I bet you don't remember Eva. <laughs> All right, guys, so I did that, and then I hung out in the lounge for like an hour and a half to get on my next flight to Detroit, which I did. You guys remember when I put up that video, boom, right here, can't be a YouTuber. When I met those parents that wouldn't let their kid who was like 13 be a YouTuber, and like, I was like, bro, that is not cool, man. Like, if your kid wants to do something, like, let him do something. But I met the complete opposite person, the gate agent when I was going onto the plane in Detroit. Meet my boy, Jim. You guys remember a few weeks ago in Fort Lauderdale, I had this family on board, and the parents were like, no, you can't be a YouTuber, you have to worry about school and all this stuff, and I'm like, ah, bro. I mean you can't be a YouTuber. Well, my boy Jim has a kid and uh, he just graduated high school and bought him a DSLR camera so he could start vlogging. Got, he saw my camera and he's like, bro, I just got my kid a camera to start vlogging. And I'm like, Jim, that's my boy. Yes, yes. Why is it cool for your son to get into YouTube? I wanted to explore, take pictures, record his life, and share it with everyone. No, I love it, man. It's so cool, man. Guys, whatever you want to do, just do it. 
surround yourself with awesome people, and uh, yeah, you guys can do whatever you want. And take it away, future Milo's. Past Milo's, thank you one more time. Oh my gosh, Jim, you are my dude. That is, oh, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's the type of dad I want to be one day. Like, whatever my kid wants to do, I don't care. Like, if my kid wants to play the piano, boom, I'm buying a piano. If my kid wants to be a giraffe, yo, I'm gonna buy my kid like a giraffe hat or something. Like, bro, you wanna be a giraffe? Like, just walk around like a giraffe, like this guy. Oh, the giraffes out here in the wild. Okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was super cool. Jim, whenever he starts his YouTube channel, guys, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna give him a shout out on here. And you guys, please subscribe to him. Uh, but yeah, so we're on the flight in Detroit and we're just hanging out and this dude comes to the back. We finished service and everything and his face is just completely pale. We were like, uh, are you okay? <laughs> and he was just like, not feeling too good. We are like, are you gonna get sick? And he was like, yep. So we like pulled the trash out home dude just yacked into the trash and i'm like okay alrighty then which actually guys it's not that bad i mean it's better than i'm doing it in the seat you know what i'm saying so he was having a tough day uh he was feeling better after that but i'm like bruh you are not looking too hot dog and uh yeah that's pretty much it we got back to the hotel it's like two something in the morning i'm an absolute zombie but it's all good because your boy just had some coffee you know what i'm saying so guys, without any further ado, let's get into this Q&A. Thank you guys so much for putting in your questions. Look at all these questions. Look at all these questions. Look at all those questions. Guys, now I got all these squares. Look at how many squares I have. Rip it once more, and then again, now you just got a crap load of squares. Look at all these squares. Guys, I'm just gonna get into all these questions. Here we go. Molly Alonzo asks, she asked though. Molly, you asked like 10 questions, but I got you, girl. How intense is in-flight training? Uh, it's not that bad. It's pretty fun, actually. Like, I personally thought it was fun. Like, I like, I don't know, just like going for a goal, you know? Because sometimes in life, you know, just like hanging out, you know, before I started YouTube and all this crazy social media jazz, like, I always just wanted to be like working towards something. So, like, whenever I was in training, I'm like, yo, like, I see my wings at the end of the tunnel. Like, I'm not doing anything besides focusing on getting those wings. How intense was it? It wasn't that bad. It was fun. It was a good time. Just all you have to do is study. That's it. Just study. Do what you're supposed to do and you'll be fine. What do I wish I knew before headed to training? Uh, don't get involved in this drama. Don't get involved in any of the drama. People got, you know, kicked out. And this is, guys, I've been with three different airlines, so this is for all of, all of my training classes. Don't get involved in any drama. Smile, show up, study, do good. That's it. Super easy. That's all you got to do. Uh, suggestions on luggage, she says too. The most durable, not such outrageous price tag. I don't know, Molly. I've been using Travel Pro for pretty much my whole entire flying career. So I would say Travel Pro, they have amazing products. This is not a paid advertisement for Travel Pro. <laughs> Got a question from my boy Faze Noir from Instagram. Do you have to pay for your hotel accommodations because I know some airlines pay for that, but I'm not sure if your does, by the way, one of the best vloggers out there on vlogging here. <laughs> I am vlogging here. Phase Noir, my boy. Uh, do you have to pay for your hotel accommodations? No, we do not. So the hotel I'm in right now is completely free and I'm actually getting paid per diem. Uh, every hour I'm away from my base, we get a per diem. But no, I don't pay for this hotel. Um, I will say though, when I am commuting, so technically right now I live in Rhode Island and I'm commuting to Vegas. So when i fly from rhode island to vegas the day before a trip i usually get a hotel or stay with a friend if i can um that hotel yes i do pay for it's just like any other job you work here at this location it doesn't matter how you get here it doesn't matter where you have to stay the night before but you have to be here and then when you're working we got you but before work like you're on your own buddy <laughs> that's pretty much how it is question from my boy surge if you could work for any other airline which would you choose What's your favorite domestic layover, international? Well, if you, it's so many questions, man. Get one question. Uh, I got you, Serge, though. I got you. Um, any other airline? I work for three airlines. I think I work for the best right now. Um, but if I could work for another one, like an international, like uh, probably Emirates. I don't know. Emirates is dope. I've been on their planes before. That is awesome. Uh, favorite layover, domestic, either Fort Lauderdale or San Diego, international. Oh, Cancun. Cancun was sick, guys. My last airline, I had a 72 hour layover during spring break in Cancun at the JW Marriott. It was 
I'm sure you guys can use your imagination for how that layover went. Thank you for the question, Serge. Question from my girl, Diane Palminter. Sorry, I watch your flight attendant videos because I'm afraid of flying. Weird, huh? No, it's not weird. Uh, but I see how normal everything is for you guys. Even turbulent flights, it relaxes me some. Do you have a tip for fearful flyers like me? And to help us feel calmer when flying. Diane, great question. A lot of people are the same in your boat. They are scared of flying, but, and it's like, I understand. I, I don't know, I love flying. So like, you get the best view in the house. But Diane, if you are a nervous flyer, I would say just to keep busy, keep your mind off it, read a book, get on your, uh, you know, tablet or something, watch a movie. Uh, if you are like very, very scared of flying, I would not recommend a window seat, you know? kind of you know scare some people I mean I think it's amazing but it's statistically it's statistically proven that it's more likely to get into an accident on the way to the airport than anything happening during the flight so you know if you're a statistics person that helps too uh, flying with friends if you have a friend sometimes people like having a little libation to keep you know calm calm the nerves maybe a glass of vino or something uh, all these things are definitely tips if you're afraid of flying it's all good bro you're good it's going to be fine. Like, nothing's going to happen. You're going to be okay. If something does happen, it's like, bro, it happens. Like, it's out of your hands. Like, why worry about something you can't control? You know what I'm saying? Like, the pilots are super, super qualified. They have to go through a couple tests to, uh, you know, be able to fly that thing. So, uh, yeah, Dan. See you on the next flight. And it's going to be all right, girl. Ashley Nicole asks, have you ever slept in a mist of fan time? If so, how did that go? Oh my goodness. Yes, yes, I have twice, Ashley. Um, it's not fun. It's terrible. Uh, you literally have a heart attack. I, so I've had two, two heart attacks. And usually what happens is you're like sleeping, you're passed out in the bed, and then your phone rings, like your room phone, because obviously your crew calls you to be like, hey, where you at, where you at? And then, you know, you wake up and you're like, oh, no way they'll either they'll be like do you want us to wait for you or do you want to meet us at the airport yeah one time i was like yeah i'll be down in two seconds I, you know i'm just literally was hopping out of my bed right there but the night before like i have everything laid out right now like if someone called me right now i was like hey you're gonna miss a shuttle i'd be like be there in two seconds and i i don't know just change super quick uh yeah how'd it go it was tough Ashley, it was tough. <laughs> it's the most stressful thing ever, but then if the shuttle leaves without you, you can just call an Uber and head there as soon as you can, which you'll still get there before you have to be there. I mean, generally speaking. And all the hotels, like, they call cabs for you if you need a cab, and they'll be here in two seconds. So it's not, it's not that hard. It's very stressful, and it's, you know, what are you going to do? Question from Megan Leon Guerrero. When the bar cart comes through for my first pass, is it rude to hit the call button afterwards if you want another adult bevy? I'm always too nervous to ask, so I settle for one drink. Flying gives me anxiety sometimes, so that liquid courage is necessary. Megan, yes, it's okay. You know, if you need something, if you want another adult beverage, flight attendants haven't come around in like, you know, 10, 15 minutes or something, like, yes. Definitely hit the call button, grab another adult bevy, especially if you're an anxious flyer, like, yo, it's all good. If that helps you calm down, like, we got you, no worries. Like, it's all about you, Megan. They're here for you. Oscar Rick asked, how many countries have you been to, Oscar? I honestly don't know. Hold on, let me count. Stand by. One hour later. Yeah, I don't know, probably like 20. I don't really count countries, it's weird. Like, some people are like, oh, I've been to like 37 countries, I wanna go to 100 countries, but like, it's like, I don't know, I just wanna go to cool places and have a good time. Like, I don't really worry about the numbers. Not a big numbers guy. Speaking of numbers, Sandra Hart asked, what does the 65 rows mean in your Instagram, LOL? Sandra, I have uh, what's called cystic fibrosis. It's a lung disease, and I've had it my whole entire life. And when kids are younger, they can't, you know, pronounce cystic fibrosis, so they just say 60 fibrosis. Um, so yeah, that's that. John Luke asks, what's crash pad life been like for you since you've been a flight attendant for so long now? I've had a few different crash pads. I don't have one now. I might get one in Vegas in a couple weeks. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Uh, crash pad life is something else. It's literally like a hostel for flight attendants and pilots where you're not there all the time. You pay like a couple hundred bucks a month and that uh, buys you one bunk bed and a house or apartment condo full of, you know, maybe like 15 bunk beds. And yeah, just like the night before, if you're commuting in and you need somewhere to stay, you just crash there. Or if you get in late from a flight and you want to go somewhere the next day, 
you just you stay there as well. So yeah, two people kind of ask like the same question. Edgar and Jason, what inspired you to start vlogging? And then Allison, who or what are your biggest inspirations when you decided to start a YouTube channel? So guys, when I started, this was like 10 months ago. Can you stop? Thank you. Actually, well, I'll tell you the full story if you guys really want to know. I'm trying to vlog here with the vacuum. So this is how I started YouTube. So I started my channel, uh, like you guys know, about 10 months ago. I had to actually delete my first video because I had copyrighted music in it. Um, but about a week after I put up my first YouTube video and I get a text from my roommate saying, hey, you know, we have a couple guys staying at our place. You know, they make YouTube videos. And I was like, who are these random dudes that are staying at our place? He's like, nah, they're cool. And I'm like, whatever. I come back from a trip and then I get back to the condo and uh, meet these guys, cool dudes from Canada. Yeah, and we made some uh, videos with them. We made this banger. We made this banger. And yeah, those videos were super fun. We had a good time. So kind of saw how they were doing their thing with the YouTube channel and then they were doing the live streams and stuff. And so I had that idea for mystery flights to just go to the airport uh, without a destination and have you guys vote for what country I went to. So I decided to do that and uh, yeah, they helped me get started a little bit and it was just all history from there. So biggest inspirations, I mean, my favorite YouTuber is Casey Neistat, Logan Paul, obviously like absolutely iconic YouTubers. Uh, those are the only two that I'm like, innovate, change the game, those are my dudes. So Sarah asks, are you dating anyone? No, not interested, just being a mom here. Come on, Sarah, how you doing? <laughs> Also, what made you become a flight attendant? Sarah, no, I'm not dating anybody at the moment. Um, so, slide into my DMs. Uh, also, what made you become a flight attendant? <laughs> I mean, I knew I'd like to travel all the time, and my mom suggested it to me. And I was like, flight attendant? You know, it's not for like chicks. And so, I don't know, I was in college, sophomore in college, and I just applied to this regional airline. And this was like five years ago. And so, they were like, all right, you know, come down for an interview. So I went to the interview and they're like, all right, you're hired. Like, come live in North Carolina. And I'm like, oh, snap. This all happened within like a few weeks. So I'm like, all right, you know, I'm like, I'll try it out. If I don't like it, I'll go back to school. And so I started doing, I'm like, wait, y'all are gonna pay me to go to these places, meet awesome people and like have a good time. I'm like, yes, okay, I'm gonna keep doing this. <laughs> a question from my boy iPod Master 929 Yo, tomorrow I have to fly 11 hours from Paris to Bangkok. Only other flights that I've done longer than this is Hawaii from Atlanta. Not ready. Any tips on how to deal with a long flight with like the one I'm taking? Yo, Paris to Bangkok, bro. Like, first off, dope. Uh, you live in France and you're going to Thailand. That's sick. Or you're from Thailand and you're going to Paris. That's, that's awesome. Like, not a lot of people can do that. So first of all, realize how amazingly lucky you are or how blessed your life is that you can do that flight, um, first off. Second off, um, how to deal with a long flight. Me, personally, uh, I, I take uh, you know some Advil PM and just like kind of knock out, go to sleep. Um, I also might have a little bit of vino. I mean, I, it's, I guess I'm kind of a bad person to ask. I can knock out on planes pretty easily, so anytime I get on a plane that I'm not working, I, I pass out. <laughs> Take a nap. Usually on, on that flight, you'll definitely have in-flight entertainment, so you just watch a movie, chill. Um, yeah, I'd do that. That's what I would do, bruh. Delton Bailey asks, how many airlines have you worked for? I've worked for three airlines. I'm with my third and final airline right now. Having a blast. My boy Slab Sauce says, cool name and cool picture, bro. <laughs> so what do you tell people who say you're doing YouTube for money? Uh, one, I don't really respond to haters. I mean, only in this past month I actually gotten like, you know, a few like hateful comments and I'm like, what is good, bro? <laughs> um, which I mean, I guess happens to, you know, anybody who's trying to, trying to do something they love, people trying to tear them down, you know? People say, if you ain't got haters, you ain't doing it right. I never really got that. I don't know, if you don't have haters, you're not doing I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I try not to spread any hate, but, um, People say I'm doing it for money. Well, bro, I make like 25 cents from YouTube, so like, I don't know how that would make sense. So, uh, yeah. My boy Ryan Dale asked, can you do a video on how to be on a standby list? And he asked this like five months ago, but I remember it because when I did this collab with uh, Yes Theory and I gave them buddy passes, everybody was asking me, yo, Malibs, how do I get free flights? How do I go to the airport and just get put on standby? Like, how do I do this? 
And I'm like, bro, what do you mean? How do you get on the standby list? Like, <laughs> you can't just show up and be like, hey, can I just be on standby for free? <laughs> you either have to be employed by an airline or you have to know someone who's employed by an airline that can give out buddy passes. So I get buddy passes. Um, I usually get like a round trip like once a month uh, that I can give to whoever I want. So when I did the collab with Yes Theory, I gave them some buddy passes. It's, it all happens online. You just, I have this little system in there that has all my information in there and then all my buddy passes and I just put their names down and they're on standby and then I just give them the confirmation number. We show up to the airport and hopefully we can make it on the flight. Um, but like in terms of how to get like just straight up free flights like you have to either be employed by an airline have a family member that's in the airline that can like list you on their benefits or just know really rich people <laughs> South End Aviation so if you go on standby you don't have to pay for the flight is that correct yes unless you're going international which you have to pay some taxes um, internationally like when I went to Dubai from Chicago it was like 114 bucks or something on standby flew on Emirates um, but yeah, 114, not bad. You guys should be flight attendants. And speaking of being flight attendants, you should click this video and watch this after this one. This is a video I made a couple months ago that literally tells you how to become a flight attendant and links 12 airlines that are currently hiring in the description of that video. So if you guys wanna do it, just apply to all 12 and like you'll have 12 different chances to get hired. Let's see, Jesse Padilla from Instagram asks, is flight attendant work always full time? Is it possible to study in uni and be a flight attendant? Um, flight attendants, it is full time being a flight attendant. But I know flight attendants that are also taking classes in a lot of different places. So uh, it is possible to do both. I would say be a flight attendant first and then go back to school. So I would say because like you have to be in training for like about two months so you won't be able to do your classes and stuff unless it's all online maybe you will but i mean it would definitely be tough especially if you haven't been in the airline industry before to you know be remembering all the airline stuff you know saying your commands in-flight procedures and all these different airport codes um and be in school at the same time it'd be very very tough i'm not saying it's impossible like i would never say any anything's possible you know be a flight attendant figure out how it works and then figure out how you can also be back in school um yeah i know a lot of flight attendants that that are in classes that are trying to be nurses lawyers like a lot of flight attendants don't want to do it forever so they just you know want to do it for a little bit and to get to travel for that reason and then they want to you know have like a normal uh nine to five or work on the ground which is not the life for me you know i'm trying to be in the skies my little skywalker hashtag make it trending <laughs> all righty and my last question is from my girl sarah Berger. hey Milo's, i have a flight attendant question what's your flight attendant question sarah boom what's your favorite holiday christmas is my favorite holiday sarah it is the best santa comes santa always comes santa's still gonna come because i'm 12 guys i don't know if you know this hopefully i'm able to get to providence rhode island so i get to go home and see my fam and get to see Santa, which I haven't uh, bought any presents yet. Uh, guys, yeah, mom, uh, everybody haven't bought any presents yet. Uh, but if you're looking to get me one, I don't have a cold. I'm freezing all the time. And uh, yeah, that is it for the Q&A today. I'll probably do another Q&A at some point. I appreciate everybody that uh, commented down below for their questions and stuff. That was super cool. I love you guys. If you guys don't know, I'm doing this giveaway. We have literally two more days for the giveaway so guys if you don't know what this giveaway is i'm gonna fly to your city wherever you're at i don't care where you're at bro i don't care if you're in angola i don't care if you're in chile i don't care if you're in argentina uh, i'm coming to your city so all you have to do is take a screenshot of this and post it on your instagram story tag me in it at my lives tv and that enters you into the contest to win the giveaway. I'm gonna be announcing the winner on Christmas Day, AKA you guys are gonna see it the day after Christmas. So stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, you guys know what to do. This is Miles TV. Smash that like button and let's fly, baby.